Welcome to this presentation where we'll discuss moving to Open Roads Designer and in particular your workspace development. Before we get started in talking about the specifics, let's talk a little bit about what a workspace is for those that may not be familiar. Essentially the workspace is that collection of settings that make Open Roads create the things that you want to create. But this really goes beyond just Open Roads. Because the same workspace, these same settings, can be used for all of your Bentley Power Platform applications, such as MicroStation, OpenBridge Modeler, Ecosim Building Designer, the Gantt Tools, etc. So we'll talk today specifically about Open Roads Designer and what we're delivering with it and our suggestions and recommendations. But keep in mind that this is a single workspace that can be set up for all of your Bentley products and used. Now we're not going to get into a lot of details or any details really on the specific settings that are contained in the workspace. Things like feature definitions and text styles and cells and fonts and rendering materials, etc. What we're focused on today is the structure in which those get set up and why the structure that you pick to set these up in, how you organize those files and those uh, folders on your servers, or is very important as you share that workspace out with others or you have to consume others workspaces and that's very important to consider because when we start out we think about a workspace as being the things that we want or that you want specifically your software to do for you but in reality we really need to be thinking about what everybody else that has an interest in the project also needs if you're a DOT or some other owner agency, you may be defining standards that you're requiring others to use, like engineering consultants or contractors, or maybe other departments within the agency. So you may set some base standards and your different departments have to use those. If you're an engineering consultant or you're a contractor or you're somebody else down the line, you're still going to probably have some of your own specific data that you need to incorporate into your workspace, sheet borders, cells, things like that. But you may also be required to use the owners, maybe a DOT or a government, uh, state governments set up, and you're required to layer, layer over that. You may also have situations where you've got a single agency or a DOT and you've got multiple versions of your workspace. Maybe there was a workspace set up in 2012 and you've been using that for projects, but in 2017 you create a new workspace and all future projects are going to use that, but you need to be able to still use the 2012 version as you finish up those projects that are still in process. So there's a lot of reasons why we have multiple workspaces out there. And the question is, which one should we use? Well, in reality, you need a combination of them. There is no one single workspace that's going to do everything you need to do all the time. And that's why I want to really encourage you today to think about how you create your workspace really matters. It matters both to you and to those around you. The choices that you make in how you set up your workspace, while all of them could be functional, the choices will determine if it's easy or if it's hard to share that workspace with others around you. Now the basic premise of a workspace is that it is a layered environment, and workspaces really need to be layered environments. They must be to be functional. We start out at the bottom our foundation, or what I'll call our base standards. Now those base standards could be something like our Open Roads Delivered standards. They could be other agency standards or something, but there's some base that we're going to start with. We're going to layer on top of that base company standards or departmental standards, that next layer up. And then finally at the top, we're going to layer on project standards, things that are very specific to the project we're working on. Maybe a sheet border or a template library. And that's going to result in our actual project data. 
Now, as we bring this across to terminology within our MicroStation or our Open Roads Designer products, when we talk about these base standards, what we're talking about is something in the software you'll see termed organization. If you're familiar with the V8i products or some of our other legacy tools, uh, these are somewhat similar to what we used to call the site level in the configuration. So kind of the site level becomes the organization level now, or what we're going to call our base standards. What we call now our company standards, or what I'm referring to as our company standards or departmental kind of standards, inside the software is now referred to as a workspace. And notice the capital S on this. It's a little bit subtle and it's a little bit confusing because we refer to the whole thing here as a workspace, this whole collection we're talking about. But we've also labeled a very specific part of this workspace within our software. You'll see in a moment where that comes into the interface, but that is part of the user interface, a label of workspace for this level. At the top level, we have something called the work set, and that's kind of equivalent to your project. Now, it should be noted here that if you do choose when you're setting this up, you can rename these terms workspace and work set to something like company and project. That is flexible, and that can be done if you choose to do that. But out of the box, in their kind of generic sense, they are referred to as workspaces and work sets. If you look at where they appear on the interface, uh, when you first open up the software, Open Roads Designer, MicroStation, or any of the other products, and you come to this screen, you're going to have the ability to select the workspace on the left. In this case, I've got one called Imperial Standards. Once I select that workspace, I can select or create new work sets under it. A work set is equivalent to a project. Each project needs to have its own work set. So I could pick that. Now files that you create in the Connect Edition products that we're working at here also get associated with a work set. So they remember which work set they came from. So when you go back and you open up a DGN file, it knows what work set it was last opened with, and it'll automatically go and grab that work set for you. Now, I mentioned earlier that there's flexibility in this. When we talk about our base standards, those could be other things. It could be the Open Roads Delivered standards that I referenced earlier, or maybe they could be some country standards. If I'm in a region of the world where the state or the country specify some standards that I must follow. They could be DOT standards. So here in the US, we may have 40 or 50 different DOTs that have different standards. Each of those could provide them out there. I may want to work with any of those. So each DOT would have their own standards. Each owner agency, no matter what country you're in, that could happen. Now within an owner agency like that, they may want to use the second level up, the workspace, for different departmental standards. So they may want the right-of-way department or the bridge department or the survey department to have slightly different standards that layer on top of their base. So where is all this stored at? And where does it get put to the, together at with these different workspaces and work sets? You'll find this data delivered out of the box in the Program Data Bentley folder. There's an Open Roads Designer folder in there. Now, of course, all of this can be relocated to a server. We don't expect that you're going to store production data all on everybody's local C drive. Uh, it can also be all set up in a project-wise managed workspace. But out of the box, you're going to find these files and folders in the C Drive, Program Data Folder, Bentley, Open Roads Designer. Now there's a little bit of difference in the folder naming that uh, gets used, depending if it's the first release, Update 1 or Update 2, but it's essentially going to be in that location. Here's a little snapshot of those folders. So we see this Open Roads Designer folder structure. If you drill down through it, you'll see a folder structure called Workspaces that's highlighted in of an orangish color here. 
And in there are the folders and the files that make up the workspace level of the definition. In this case, we've got an example, imperial standards, metric standards, and a training and examples being highlighted here. Inside each workspace, as a child or children to it, are work sets. So in the screen here, I've expanded out the training and examples workspace, and we see a subfolder in there for some standards. We'll talk about those a little later. And the work sets under them. Those work sets include those different projects that are set up inside that workspace. In this case, a geotechnical, an integrated highway life cycle, and a training imperial and training metric. So it is a parent-child relationship there. Now all of this, remember, is built on top of our base standards. So where are those base standards located? By default, and MicroStation includes a folder structure called Organization. And if you open up this folder that I've got highlighted here, you'll find a bunch of subfolders for storing all of these different types of standards in. And those can be put in there, and it'll pick those up automatically no matter which workspace or work sets you choose to use. However, we recommend you do not use this. This is really where, from an Open Roads designer standpoint, we are making a hard recommendation that you not use that standard methodology and you use something, a slight tweak to that, that we're going to provide you. And the reason that we really encourage you not to use this standard methodology is because a single organization is just not good enough. Almost always we run into situations where we're working for multiple base standards. Whether that's because we got multiple versions of them, like our 2012-2017 example, or I'm a consulting firm and I'm working for multiple different DOTs or multiple different countries. If I'm located elsewhere in the world, I may be doing work in Sweden and Denmark and Germany and France and the UK and I need to be able to pull from those. Whatever your situation is, it's very common that you need to be able to work across multiple different base standards. So what we've done with Open Roads Designer is we've created another folder there called Organization Civil. Organization S Civil. And all that really is is a copy of the organization folders allowing you to place multiples in here. So we deliver two with the software out of the box, one called o o Open Roads Training Imperial and one called Open Roads Training Metric to, <clears throat> to give you a starting spot for those standards that you need to create. So it's going to give you the template that you can then just insert your data into. This organizational civil folder structure, like I said, what it's really equaling is allowing you to do multiple base standards. It's still going to be layered by the workspace for your company and your department type standards. It's still going to be layered over the top of by the work set for your project standards. The way we invoke these is we call the base standard from within the workspace. So the workspace actually calls which of the multiple base standards you're going to load. This allows us to support multiple different base set standards. It allows our base standards to be very self-contained. We'll get into the folders in a second and take a look at this. But you'll see they're very self-contained. You can zip up one file, one folder, put it in a zip file, ship it off to whoever you need to. That makes them also easy to redistribute to others who may need your workspace. Now the basic procedure that we'll go through to create a new set of base standards, browse out to the folder where the organization civil data is stored, copy one of the existing folder structures, either the imperial or metric, whichever one is closest to a match to what you use, copy the config file that goes with that, again there's an imperial and a metric, just copy it to your new name, and then last go in and add, remove, delete, replace all of the files in that organization structure that you want to replace with your methodologies. You're not going to have to replace everything. Probably a lot of what's in there you'll find useful. You know, reports, uh, some of the color tables, a lot of that stuff may be fine for your needs. 
Other things, you probably have different level definitions or maybe element template definitions, cell libraries. Do you want to add, replace? So you can just swap those out in there. We built all the hard logic for you already. When it's time to create a workspace, open up the software. Through the interface, say create new workspace. Now there's one little trick to this here right now until we get a little improvement in our user interface. Once you create it, you do have to go to a config file and edit it. So we'll open that config file up real quick. We'll edit it. We'll point it to the organization civil that we want to use, and then we're done. That's a one-time change. Again, remember, all this can be stored on your server, so it's a one-time setup for all projects you do for that agency. It's a manual edit, but it's not something you do daily or on every project or anything else. It's kind of a one-time setup for each agency that you do work with or each base standard that you're going to work with. And then optionally, you can add in, layer in additional changes to the settings at this workspace level. You don't have to do anything because you've already got all your base standards there. But if you want, Things that are company specific or department specific could be added into the standard structure. Lastly is how do I create a project or a work set? It can be very much the same thing. I start up my software, I'll select my workspace, I choose the create new work set option, and I'm off and running. That's all I need to do. If I do want to have some things that are specific to my work set or specific to my project, I can optionally go in and add those files into the folder structure we've already provided for you, but nothing is actually required. All right, let's give it a try. Let's go and take a look at how this works in the software. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.